Tech News Tuesday for February 11th, 2014. This is the 38th episode of the Pride Investigator Vice podcast. Yes, I love technology, but not as much as you, you see. But I still love technology. that episode that I am starting to really enjoy, the Tech News Tuesdays. You know, you'd think it'd be easier than it really is to find some cool stuff to talk about that isn't, uh, that isn't super boring, you know what I mean? Like something you're going to be like, oh, that's really cool. But I was able to wrangle up a few news items that I thought were pretty nifty. So we're going to discuss some. Um, so one of the first things I stumbled upon uh, this past couple of weeks, because we missed the last Tech News Tuesday, was um, these augmented reality sunglasses, um, which involve a... Uh, a contact lens and sunglasses. Now, they're they're kind of uh, similar in the in the uh, in the context of um, the Google Glass, but what they do allow you to do is to be able to apparently see through the items that that are displayed uh, with the help of the um, uh, contact lenses. And I'm going to post uh, the video that the YouTube video that I saw, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, and it has like a demo at the beginning of what the possibilities could possibly be that this thing's providing. Um, but the actual video that they show that these sunglasses provide on your screen uh, was pretty neat. Like he, uh, one of the things that I saw that in the in the video was uh, somebody was looking at a skyline, and it would literally point out points of interest, and and it, they happened to be looking at like Sea World and some other cool things. So an arrow would point just randomly as you went across the skyline and looked around where that location was. Another thing they did was um, it had like menu options, and I'm assuming it's going to maybe uh, maybe even replace your smart smartphone down the road. If they can do all the cool stuff that they say it's going to do, um, also the, the one of the videos they looked into the sun and automatically the I guess the glasses knew to maybe do the temperature and so it told the weather for the next five days in that area. And another little thing that I saw was that um, it had GPS and it was literally giving directions uh, through the sunglasses, which um, I, I would use as a private investigator uh, because. Um, sometimes you don't, I mean, not that it's huge inconvenience to look down at your GPS or your cell phone, um, but it would be nice to not have that going on and having to look down or wherever it is that I have it in my car. I mean, this is me personally. I wouldn't mind just having them on there. Um, so definitely something to look at. It, uh, it has this uh, potential for like this interactive display, uh, even on the, the demo theme, it's, it was showing like uh, screens popping up in the, you know, in view through your sunglasses and being able to touch different items and make them react. So maybe it was your email, you're checking your email and maybe you're scrolling through it. So definitely something cool. I don't know how close they are actually to mastering this technology, but just the fact that their brains are going towards that and they're trying to master it is is a good direction for any any of us to be in, um, especially for you know this is always has potential for the investigative world, the law enforcement world, um, and uh, I mean of course I'm always thinking of how it's going to help me in my job and how it's going to help you in your job. Um, you know uh, another thing that I came across from SmithsonianMag.com, basically it's a Smithsonian uh, uh, website. And they, they touch on some cool things that are happening. And this was written by Tuan Nugent. And basically, they found a student in Korea that has come up with a blueprint for wearable gears. Now, this is like straight out of, you know, James Bond kind of stuff where you stick a, or a mouthpiece in your mouth and it's got filters. And you can go basically without air tanks and go underwater. Um, now, I, 
unless you're a super duper spy private investigator. I don't know that you'll be using this, but how cool is it anyways to even, you know, might be on the edges of what, you know, the everyday person might need, but um, you never know. You never know what you might need in your, your toolkit as a private investigator. Um, anyways, um, now there's some experts saying in, in this article that, um, you know, scientifically it might not be able to be done, even though there's a prototype for this. And um, and basically the amount of seawater that would need to be filtered through it um, and then the ox- just to get the enough oxygen to get out of it. And then, and then uh, on top of that, if you're getting pure oxygen, that's not good for you. So, again, something else uh, that's out there that um, would definitely um, be good for humanity, I think, something like that, something smaller, something, you know, beyond the air tanks and things like that. I'll post the uh, I'll post the article in there with the pictures, and you'll probably see a picture on the video here that we're uh, at the podcast. Very cool. I was I was very impressed by that. I'm gonna I always kind of be looking out for stuff like that. Um, you know, it's funny because I, I I mentioned it in my last podcast that I went to the Spy Museum, and it is amazing how um, and I, I don't want to get too deep into it, but it's amazing how uh, you know life. Uh, the way things in the government and the, the things that they design imitate movies and vice versa. So, um, you know, a lot of the designs that I saw, like one of the things I happened to see, and I'll just go ahead and reveal this, is an umbrella with a gun, right? And that's something you see out of a movie, but that was real life. They really had those, and I think it was a Russian uh, design um, that they had come up with. But um, I took a million pictures of this place. I'll definitely get to talk about that. Uh, in a near future of uh, either a regular podcast or Tech News Tuesday. I don't know. I don't know what I'm feeling. Uh, and let's see here. Last last little item here, which uh, which is it's just very interesting to me because uh, I just reported on how uh, a couple a couple weeks ago a woman had been pulled over. She got a ticket for speeding. And, and then on top of that, she also got a ticket for wearing Google Glass. Now, when she went to court, um, she, I guess she was found not guilty on speeding and she was not found not guilty on, um, having uh, a visual aid or something like that. I can't remember what it was exactly, uh, in regards to the ticket, but, uh, she was found not guilty for wearing the Google glass and having them on during driving. Well, I read an article, uh, let's see where did it come out of uh, venture beat. Uh, basically the New York police department ordered some Google glasses, uh, hypocrites. I don't know. I don't think it was in New York that the lady I pulled over, but uh, so they ordered Google Glass. They want to see what it could possibly do for the law enforcement, um, which I thought was pretty neat. Um, and uh, in the article said, Chief in- in- Information Officer of the San Francisco Police Department, Susan Merritt, said that her department has not yet tested the wearable Google uh, computers, but she says the applications for law enforcement are potentially huge. Uh, Google Glass could have similar value um, uh, for police forces and and having wireless facial recognition. We've talked about that before. If the police department gets it, I want it too. Um, I think that (laughs) if it comes out, you know, I I don't know if it'll happen right away, but I'm sure enough legislation down the road will break down the walls about facial recognition. And anyway, so they say for police officers, it would give them the ability to um, uh, help match suspects' names with faces um, through various police databases that maybe law enforcement uh, law enforcement agencies would share, um, and uh, National Crime Information Center. Um, they said an example like, look, if we can look at someone's rap sheet while we're speaking with them, you know, they wouldn't. It'd be they wouldn't even know what was happening, but yet we'd be able to know. Okay. Uh, you know, arrested for this, uh, you know, drunk driving, whatever, and they'd have that maybe just based off of um, just the, just just looking at them through Google Glass. Um, so I thought that was really cool. You know, of course, you know, whatever's happening with this law enforcement, you know, it, it, it would be a huge thing if if law enforcement picked it up. Um, but again, you know, uh, I see this for PIs in the future. You know, of course, getting driving directions, GPS, turn here, turn there. Um, uh, seeing who's calling you on your phone without having to answering it, uh, and without being interrupted, you know, why well, maybe you're doing surveillance or maybe even during an interview, you know, you can kind of, uh, do a bunch of things at once. Of course, I like the camera functions. 
Um, you know, it's really going to come down to what, how far they take that technology. What the, you know, even if it's linked up to your phone, that, I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. But I would just like to see them uh, have somebody develop apps for it, and uh, you know, really bring it along when it hits, uh, hits mainstream. I don't, know, I, I don't know. I think it has potential, and I, and I hate to have to bring it up again. I just thought it was very cool that law enforcement was uh, taking a serious look at it. And there's going to be other competitors coming around um, with uh, their version of it um, and uh, whatever. I mean, the more competition, that means, you know, more people might take an interest in in uh, helping develop that technology. Anyways, so uh, that's that's Tech News Tuesday. It's short and sweet. You're on your way. You get to hear about some cool things. Go to the website, watch the video. Um, and, of course, don't forget our sponsor, investigatormarketing.com Ruben uh, has is a, has basically decided to specialize in creating websites specifically towards private investigators now Ruben has private investigation experience you're not just getting a guy who doesn't know anything about being a private investigator he is a private investigator so on top of that he just happens to be a tech nerd and uh, and likes to build websites and he's got his company and he's offering 10% in the month of February for 2014 Listen, folks, if you're on the fence, you got to take things into perspective. If you're, you know, if you're charging, let's say, I don't know, what, 50 bucks an hour for your, 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 you know, independent guy working 50 bucks an hour and you work an eight hour day, that's $400, right? And just think another hundred or $200 more. And you've basically bought yourself a website and some SEO design. I, I don't know the exact price, but just think it really would only take about two days of work to pay for a website that can get ranked, hopefully, and and start getting you phone calls. The main thing you want to do when you have a website, and of course you want to have a website and you want it to be pretty when you send people there, especially when you have your business cards and whatnot, uh, but you want it to be found because that's what people are doing. They're searching the Internet. They're searching Google. Google is the main driving force when it comes to search engines. You want to get ranked on there. What I mean by that is when people search for your city and private investigator, you want your name to be on the first page of results. They don't want to have to go any deeper because no one's going to go to the second or third page. It just doesn't happen. Ask yourself how often you do it. You're always looking for the top pages. And so, uh, yeah, let let Ruben do that for you. Let him check it out. Make sure you mention the Private Investigator Vice podcast so you can get that 10% off and tell them, uh, tell them I sent you. And, yeah, that's going to be about it. I thank you so much for listening. And uh, I love technology. Peace out.